He is the architect of the moment, a star who many countries and investors dream of hiring. Euronews spoke to Frank Gehry in Oviedo, Spain, where he received another award in a career already brimming with international accolades. Frank Gehry, thank you very much for being with Euronews today. You just unveiled an impressive new museum in, in Paris while uh, Centre Pompidou is uh, celebrating your career. Here in Oviedo, you are honored with the Prince of Asturias Award. How do you feel about so much recognition? Very suspicious. <laughs> uh, I, I work always with a healthy insecurity, so I don't really believe all the stuff. It's nice, it feels good. It's kind of peripheral. I, I can't explain it. I don't, you know. The French president, Francois Hollande, described the Louis Vuitton Foundation as a cathedral of light. Some of the guests in the opening night saw a fish, a cloud, a sailboat. What is it, Mr. Gary? Everything. <laughs> There's all kinds of metaphors, I guess, but I'm a sailor. I do sail. And uh, when you use glass, you can't hang paintings on glass. So. The real, the real building is inside. It's a double building. And uh, so it became sales through the park, kind of. Where did you get the inspiration to create such an extraordinary building? First inspiration is Paris. Second is the, hol the holiness, the sacredness of this site. The Jardin Acclimatation is a 19th century park, children's park. Mm -hmm where Proust played as a boy, and many more. Um, I have a client, uh, Bernard Arnault, who's, he's kind of an artist in a way. I, I know he's trained as an engineer, but with all his work with the fashion world and so on, he's he, he knows how to work with artists, with people who are creative. Yeah, talking about Bernard Arnault, Bernard Arnault yeah. the uh, LVMH chairman, yes. uh, he commissioned you after a visit to the uh, Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. Bilbao, yes. How important is this museum in your career? Bilbao? Oh, my God. Um, I don't know what percentage, but it was pretty important, I think. Yeah. The impact on the city, it changed the city. It uh, was an economic win-win for everybody and it was very modest in price 80 million euros in 90, 1997 uh, since then it's paid back 17 years the city looks very different now than it did when i first arrived very very prosperous looking um, so i'm very happy about that it's a miracle somehow many cities now would like to have their own guggenheim could you as an architect? But they don't hire me. They yeah, hire other architects to do it. That's an interesting thing, though, isn't it? Uh, it's a funny thing. They don't want one like me. They want another guy to do one, another person. And sometimes they can't. So you can, as an architect, promise to another city or rich investor the, the impact that you had with the... Uh... I can't promise. <laughs> but it's been happening a lot, so happened in the Disney Hall, it happened in Chicago in the park. Um, so maybe I'm lucky. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to quote you now. You said in a documentary eight years ago, I want to hide under the covers when my buildings open. I'm yeah. terrified about what people think. Is that still the case? Yes. <laughs> if I step outside myself to other people, sometimes People act very uh, self-important when they do a building or do something. I, I can't relate to that very easily. I, it, maybe it's a false modesty, I don't know, but it, I, it's just the way I am. I can't help it. Because the, I'm always working on a new building, and the, I call it a healthy insecurity, that I'm always doing something. I'm not sure it's going to be any good. Uh, I read that some, that some describe your talent as a brilliant madness. What do you think about this? Brilliant what? Madness. Madness. <laughs> ah. 
it's not so mad, actually. It's, it's uh, first of all, I'm a human being, and I have a human DNA, and I can't escape the, the, uh, the uh, uh, limitations of being a human being. I can't escape. <laughs> uh, great artists are always called that, I guess. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I should be flattered. You have many ongoing projects now. New Guggenheim in Abu Dhabi, Facebook campus in, in California, the Eisenhower Memorial in Washington. Do you ever think about slowing down or even retiring? I'm thinking about it right now. I'd like to go, <laughs> go, go lie down. Um, I don't know how. I, I enjoy the work. I enjoy the meeting people and um, so I and uh, I have a nice team. We've developed a great team, and I have a, I have a mission, kind of, to re-empower the architect in the equation. Today in the world, the architect is less important than the contractor, and I want to put it back to at least the architect should run the project. And I've developed computer programs with Dassault and now with Trimble uh, to uh, simplify, to er eliminate change orders. When we did Bill Bao, it was really the first real effort on using that software and that process. And we saved a lot of money in that building that would normally be extra for the contractor. We <laughs> squeezed it down. And, that, and so that gives more power to the architect. It gives me more relevance to allow me to do, build things that uh, ex do more expressive buildings. And the only reason to do more expressive buildings is to humanize them. The dull glass boxes are cold and not friendly to humanity. And I'm trying to change some of that. To finish this interview, I'm going to quote you again. Uh -oh. You said to the curator of the Louis Vuitton Museum, I made you a violin, now you have to play it. Yes, I did. Yesterday I said that. <laughs> well, from Uranus, we already thank you for the music. Thank you very much, thank Mr. Gary.